Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and today I've got a pretty awesome video for you guys. So, last week, I guess about nine days ago, technically, there was a change to a couple legendaries for demonology. One being the Implosion Helm, it's no longer dead in single target fights, and the other one was to Bale Spider's Burning Core, the legendary that buffs Demon Bolt. Now, previously it gave you a 25% damage increase for each Shadow Bolt you cast, and it stacked up to four times. However, when you cast a Demon Bolt, it would consume that stack, thus making it really hard to just weave in like multiple Demon Bolt procs, use it optimally with the Necro Lord Decimating Bolt damage ability and all that, but it was changed last week. It now says, I believe it's an 8% damage increase, but it stacks four times and it has a four, or sorry, 15, 15 second duration. And when you cast a Demon Bolt, it doesn't consume the actual stack anymore. You gain stacks by actually casting Shadow Bolt, and let's be real here, even with multiple Demon Bolt procs and things, as far as Demonology is concerned, it's pretty easy to maintain that buff, being 15 seconds long and only having to cast Shadow Bolt to refresh it. I'm really excited about this build. Any Weak Wars profiles or add-ons you see here are indeed available to you guys for free on my Twitch. If you want to swing by, hang out, grab them, ask any questions anytime, feel free to do so. Let's get into what the build actually looks like, and how, I guess, synergistic it is, because... If you thought Decimating Bolt Affliction was synergistic, this build is miles beyond that. So, there are two things that are really cool with this build. Like I mentioned, the first part, it's super synergistic with just most of Demonology's toolkit. Starting off, obviously, number one, it is 8% four times. Burning Wraps of the Bale Spider, Bale Spider's Burning Core. So, essentially, this buff is a permanent 32% deep or damage increase to your Demon Bolt after you cast four Shadow Bolts. And for the most part, you should maintain this buff probably the whole fight, barring having to move or death, something weird happening. It's very easy to maintain this. It lasts 15 seconds, and you're typically casting Shadow Bolt a decent bit as Demonology because it's the way you build shards. So, we have a 32% buff here from this. That's pretty solid. The next thing, Decimating Bolt. Now, Decimating Bolt has been nerfed 10 times. However, it still affects Demon Bolt three times. So you have a baseline 100% damage amp. I believe when you're deep into Execute, it's like 180-ish percent now. It was changed like a few weeks ago. I don't remember at this point. It's been overhauled 10,000 times. But for simplicity's sake, let's call it an average of a 120% damage increase to Demon Bolt. Moving on to Talents here. There's a lot that help increase Demon Bolt's damage. Now, keep in mind, Demon Bolt is Shadow Flame damage. So, first row here, Dreadlash. Now, Dreadlash technically is not a Shadow Flame damage increase here, but if paired with from the Shadows, Dreadbite causes the target to take 20% additional Shadow Flame damage for the next 12 seconds. From the Shadows, so... If this is applied, obviously 12 seconds, you know, Demon Bolt deals more damage. If you rock the actual conduit here, Carnivorous Dreadstalkers, or Stalkers, it gives your Dreadstalkers a chance to trigger an additional Dreadbite. Well, if you're playing FTS and Dreadlash, your Dreadbite now AoEs, so it'll apply that to every target. Now, while you're not AoEing Demon Bolts or anything, keep in mind that Hand of Gul'dan damage, Implosion damage, those are also Shadow Flame damage. So there's a bit of extra added utility there, but for the most part, it's just sort of a cool kind of thing, unless you're looking at a Mythic Plus kind of build and being in a weird spot as a whole. So first row here, honestly, Strength is probably still your best bet for this build, but regardless, there is some synergy there. 25 row, though, it gets pretty interesting. Power Siphon sacks two imps, giving you two charges of Demonic Core. Demonic Core means Demonic Core is an instant cast Demon Bolt. And on top of that, it increases the Demon Bolt damage by 30%. So, if you can control this proc and stack it with, let's say, your Necro Lord usage, having four stacks of Bale Spiders, the damage amp, your bolts hit hard. But moving on, FTS obviously, so you have 30, you have 20. Then you look at the 45 row. Now, while these don't necessarily increase the Demon Bolt damage on their own, Sack Souls does. And there's synergy between Sack Souls and the 45 row here. Technically, all three options. Now, Inner Demons gives you two passive imps pretty much all the time and a chance to summon another one for, like, 15-ish seconds. Uh, mostly, it's, be, it's normally going to be 15 seconds unless you have your Tyrant out and it gets extended. So, basically... Inner Demons with Sack Souls means you have a baseline flat 8% damage increase to your Demon Bolt whenever you cast it. If you're looking at Soul Conduit, though, it's a bit of a wash because it's going to give you more shards to cast more, you know, more, I guess, Hand of Gul'dan more frequently. Uh, to Basically, to summon more pets. But at the same time, there might be a certain point where you're playing Power Siphon and other things with good procs that you're getting a bit backloaded on shards. And it, there's merit to both. However... Inner Demons, I think, gives you the best, like, passive 
sack souls damage. Yeah, guaranteed 8% increase, potentially more, and you always have pets out. Which at the same time, you can pretty much guarantee like a full use of a power siphon whenever you pop it. Grimoire Felguard's not bad. If you're playing Demonic Consumption, which we'll look at in the build coming up here in a minute, even with you know, like Decimating Bolt and Power Siphon, it's a very, very strong choice. The health funnel, the health, I guess, siphon that you can, you can take from your Felguard is really, really OP. And even with all the synergy between Sack Souls, FTS, Siphon, Bale Spiders, all this, I have to say Demonic Consumption still is really, really strong. But with the changes to Bale Spiders being permanent, I'm curious to see if Sack Souls is going to pull ahead. But once again, the final route here with the synergy between these two and taking this into account, Sack Souls is the, is the damage jam. That if you're going to play in this build, if you want this build, Sack Souls is just pretty much what you're looking for. There's no weird like Shadow Bolt versus Demon Bolt empowerment here. It's all the same across the board. And I, I'd say, let's say on average you're playing Inner Demons, you're going to have out probably anywhere between like 7, 10 ish pets, or I guess demons. Let's say 8. It gives you an additional 24% damage amp. So you're looking at roughly a 225 to 275, depending on where you're casting your decimating bolt. Amp to demon bolt. It's really, really strong. There's a lot of synergy with this build. But I can say this build feels very different from the demonology we've played in the past. Setting up demonic consumption, tyrants, LOSing imps, even though that's gone, like it's oddly consistent. And I guess eerily smooth people see demonology and they often think that it's like one of the most complicated specs in the game it's not really you pretty much just summon imps and summon dogs on cd and cast your pets and you're good to go this build is very very different let's take a look at a few i guess this this version of the spec is very different let's take a look at a few different builds here and really break down the damage amps and how it's truly looking in combat so the first build that i want to talk about here is playing demonic strength power siphon from the shadows inner demons and sacrifice souls you can see all my talents in the top left corner here it's important to note that we are indeed playing the carnivorous stalkers dread stalker conduit that has a chance to reproc from the shadows if they melee you can see it expiring on the target right now that dread stalkers base buff that is actually from the shadows the weak ore you see there with the big large orange like i don't know pomegranate whatever that thing is looking thing right there uh that is tracking bell spiders burning core the 15 second duration and the four stacks of it so with this build for the most part most of your demon bolt damage is going to i guess revolve around your tyrant because you're summoning x amount of imps x i guess one set of dread stalkers with fts and then dumping as many into it as possible casting your second set for an fts refresh going decimating bolt and then power siphon we're indeed holding power siphon for decimating bolt and vice versa depending on cooldowns and all that outside of that you're going to have your imps your dread stalkers out for the most part just casting out on cd but trying to coordinate dumping your demon bolts whether they're with it, with, like, whether they're decimating bolt ones or in a power siphon window or not, just around you from the shadows. So, if you're not overcapping on shards, overcapping on demonic core procs, it's more or less better to hold for when you cast your dread stalkers, like right now, and then you start dumping the bolts. Now, to be fair, we probably could have done a bit of a better job weaving like bolt hand bolt if we, could get, you know, to get a few more pets out for sack souls. But for the most part, after the, like a three-ish minute build here, we ended at 2.6k. With Demon Bolt being a lot of our damage, it's 28.7%, which is actually just absurd. Now, there's a lot of synergy here, like I said, with Sack Souls, Inner Demons, FTS, Power Siphon. It's up there. Look at our Demon Fire damage from our Tyrant being 2.8%. That's, well, that's honestly abysmal, but we're not playing Demonic Consumption. We're not playing Grimoire Felguard. We're not playing Vile Fiend. This build is very, very different from the builds of Demonology that we've seen in the past. Your pets still matter. Our Fell Fire bolts are about, what, 17.5%. Your melee from my Fell Guard, or is it I don't know what his name is, 7.9%. Uh, but Demon Bolt just really, really cranks. And the thing with Demon Bolt, you have a lot of, like, Demonic Core procs. This build is pretty mobile, whether you're playing you know, Orgus, whether you have Power Siphon up or not. You can cast a lot on the move. Yes, you get the sand sail to keep your pets out, but it's still really strong. And depending on how like sack souls and things end up being tuned, this could be a real contender. However, one of the biggest, I guess, points of debate is inner demons versus soul conduit. Let's take a look at a soul conduit build. So, as mentioned, this is essentially the same build we just saw, however, we're playing Soul Conduit here over Inner Demons for a bit more RNG. Now, the opener I'm following here, by the way, I should have mentioned, is precasting Demon Bolt in the Call Dreadstalker and Hand of Gul'dan. 
building back the three shards with Shadow Bolt, casting Hand in the Tyrant, and then going Hand, Shadow Bolt, Hand, and then building two shards for Dreadstalkers, and then going into the full Power Siphon um, Decimating Bolt sequencing here. So we're min-maxing min our Bell Spiders, min-maxing Pets, min-maxing FTS, and min-maxing um, Power Siphon and Decimating Bolt. There's so many things here, holy cow. So the one thing about this build, you can almost even see it happening right here, is that Inner Demons gives you a bit more consistency with two permanent imps and the chance to spawn another demon, and Soul Conduit brings a bit more RNG with it. Now, RNG means a higher upside, also a lower, you know, low end. But you'll see a little bit here that happens. You get a lot of core procs coming in, almost to the point where you forget to refresh your Bale Spiders because you're dumping so many bolts back to back to back with FTS windows, with Siphon, with Decimating Bolt. It's not that hard to mess it up here. And that was not the case without Soul Conduit because you're dumping so many hands, so many bolts, so many like, shard refunds. Soul Conduit ends up being pretty spicy, but honestly, like, it can come back to bite you. Now, one of the cool things here is that when we actually went back into our second Tyrant here, we don't have to wait for Vile Fiend. We don't have to wait for Grimoire because we're not playing those. But you're able to set up with Demonic Core procs like a normal Tyrant. And all those pets being extended means it's going to be a pretty big Sack Souls damage increase. Our hardest hitting Decimating Bolt, which you're going to see, sorry, Demon Bolt, which you're going to see here in probably about 15-ish seconds. We should be going into a Tyrant probably in about 10 or so. With the first build was 12.5k. With this build, however, it was a whopping 17.2.3, probably for the most part, K. 17.3K, Demon Bolt-wise. Overall damage for this build was 28.3% from Demon Bolt. So you can see sort of the upside of Soul Conduit there. Now, I mean, RNG is RNG, and Demonology has a lot of that in the first place, but that's even more damage. So I think with a bit more play, a bit more like just getting used to the rotation, once again, min-maxing FTS windows and all of that, it would, this build is probably a bit better than the Inner Demons one. The Soul Conduit up, like, refunds, you can manage them for the most part. And in the end, like, if you're really in a tight spot where somehow you're at five shards and your buff's going to drop, you're at four stacks of core, okay, just waste a shard and refresh. But you really shouldn't be there. It just, it just requires a bit more tight play and reacting to procs a bit ahead of time, knowing how the build feels. But, I mean, look at our fire our fireball damage. Still 18%. Demon Bolt being 283 That's just massive. But once again, Demonic Tyrant Demon Fire damage at 27 There's a lot of synergy here. And this build is really, really, really impressive. However, one of my biggest concerns, we ended this sim at about, with this, this test, at about 2.6k, was how it looked versus Demonic Consumption. Let's take a look. So as mentioned, in this build, we swapped from actual Soul Conduit or Inner Demons to Grim War Felguard and Demonic Consumption, which once again you can see in the top left corner. We're still playing from the Shadows, we're still playing Power Siphon, and we're still a Nefro Lord here. So we're still trying to work around the, the actual Decimating Bolt Power Siphon windows with FTS. But the big thing here is that we're playing Grim War Felguard, which number one is a large increase to our Tyrant's damage when you have consumption because of the health that it siphons. And number two, it being a two minute cooldown comparatively to our Tyrant being a minute and a half, means that our Tyrant has essentially become a two minute CD. How, which makes a bit of a difference as far as like Demon Bolt damage goes, you know. But for the most part, it's still there. And I really wanted to compare the overall damage of these two builds together. Now, I will say, I'll pull up the meter here for you guys. So I guess the overall result, results. We finished this actual three minute run at 2.7k, which is about 100 DPS higher than, than the last two Sack Souls, Inner Demon, Soul Conduit builds. Look at the Demon Fire damage here a 10% increase, 10.2 technically, from the last sim. Look at the Demon Bolt damage. A 10% drop-off here. So, there's a pretty big difference. Uh, Demon Bolt's still hitting really hard. It's actually up there. The synergy between FTS, Power Siphon, Decimating Bolt, can't be denied. It's still really strong. But look at how powerful Demonic Consumption is. It's a whopping 10% of our damage from our Demonic Tyrant. And that's not including the actual Grimoire Felguard uh, duration extension. There's that, too. It's damage increase and the actual bonus 15 seconds. It's really, really strong. It gives you a bit of a longer damage profile, with your Tyrant being two minutes instead of a minute and a half, but the damage is just undeniable. We finished 100 DPS or so higher, and once again, RNG is RNG. But I said to myself, the build's still strong. The Demon Bolt synergy's still there. Let's take a look playing Grimoire, Vile Fiend, instead of FTS with Demonic Consumption and see where that's at. So this is the de facto go-to single target build of Demonology that 
pretty much everyone's play for the duration of Alpha and the Beta, except for the fact that we're playing Power Siphon over Demonic Calling. Now, Demonic Calling is the actual talent that gives you, for the most part, instant free cast called Dread Stalkers. It was changed from BFA to cost two less Soul Shards instead of one, so that puts you in a good spot there. However, once again, Power Siphon, Synergy, I wanted to see where it was. So the opener here, we're going to Grimoire, Vile Fiend, Dogs, a set of Imps, and then Blasting. Now, once again, you have your two-minute Grimoire, which means you're holding your Tyrant for two minutes instead of a minute and a half, but your Vile Fiend is 45-ish seconds, so you can pop that in between your Tyrant, and you end up holding the third one for your Grimoire. Now, what, first off the bat here, you can see our burst damage is higher. We're bursting pretty high comparatively to the Sack Souls... Inner Demons, Soul Conduit builds. The throughput and consistency probably is not there as much because we don't have from the shadows anymore, which means we're not having to play around casting our called Dread Stalkers into our Decimating Bolt into Power Siphon. More or less, you can just dump your Demon Bolts when you want, which at times, depending on if you get good refunds or not, we're not playing any of the refund conduits or legendaries here, but with those being a thing, you might get backed up a bit on actual Power Siphon procs. It makes the gameplay a bit smoother. You know that, okay, in a minute and a half or two minutes, I have these big CDs again, and for the most part, just cast Red, cast red Stalkers, cast Imps, cast Bolts, and you're good to go. Oh, and make sure to maintain your buff. I will say, with this build, though, it is much easier to maintain the Bale Spider's Burning Core buff than pretty much any other ones. You pretty much just cast imps and dogs. I can cast them at will, and you're good to go. The overall damage breakdown from this build, Demon Bolt being 15.5% of your damage, comparatively to Demon Fire being 15%. Demon Fire being your Demonic Tyrant. It, like Demon Fire gains even more value because you're playing Vile Faint here in conjunction with Grimoire Felguard. They're really, really close. Even playing the full-on build outside of Demonic Hauling, Demon Bolt's damage is still up there, and with Power Siphon giving you even more, even more mobility, this could be a pretty real build. The overall, I guess, end of 3-minute test was at 2.8k, so we've gained about 200-ish DPS in the Sack Souls version playing Soul Conduit or Inner Demons, and for the most part not playing Vile Fiend. But it's just odd to see a hybrid sort of of two builds, playing Demonic Consumption, playing Grimoire Felguard, and Vile Fiend, but also having all that Demon Bolt damage in there. It really, it, it, it's really just the synergy between Necrolord, Decimating Bolt, Power Siphon, and you can't even like really sight from the shadows here. It's just strong. It's Bale Spider's Burning Core. The Legendary, a 32% just flat increase to your Demon Bolt damage. Might not seem like a whole lot, but in the end, Bolt hits hard, like Demon Bolt hits harder than Shadow Bolt. And you have so many procs coming in from Imps expiring or random pets expiring or Dreadstalkers giving you two or Power Siphon every, you know, 45 seconds giving you two. You cast a whole lot of Demon Bolts comparatively to Demo, I guess, of the past or of previous builds. This build's a lot of fun. And if there's any changes to, like, Sack Souls or to, I guess, a buff to Nefroler Decimating Bolt or Power Siphon, one of many things can happen and make this build the go-to. Like, this version of Demonology is really exciting. I had a lot of fun playing. I guess testing with this with a bit of tuning this could be a real contender on patchwork fights in castle nathria so recapping all that data you can see that the demon bolt damage with bale spiders with power siphon it's really there now obviously playing the sack souls builds comparatively to the decon builds it was a lot more prevalent there was a lot more demon bolt damage but listen bfl invocation has been pretty op for a while it's, unfor well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to spin it, our best single target talent, if you like Nether Portal, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, and pretty much just our best, it's just the best talent we have as a whole. Now, Sack Souls has been undertuned for a little while, and at this point, even playing a build focused around Demon Bolt and things, it does indeed appear that Demonic Consumption still is the front runner here, even taking into account all the synergy between Sack Souls, Soul Conduit, Inner Demons, Bale Spiders, Demon Bolt, and Necro Lord, but... Obviously, there's RNG in this testing. I'm not running sims here because APLs aren't done, all that kind of stuff. It's testing, but I'll be real, like, this is on a 190, or what, what's my eye level? 194 eye level character. The damage wasn't that much worse. We ended at, like, I believe 2.4, I'm sorry, 2.6 for both the Sack Souls tests and 2.7, and then 2.8 for the Baleful Invocation test, which are playing Grimoire Felguard and Vialfiend, and to be fair, had a much stronger damage profile. The, consist the consistency of the Demon Bolt builds, damage-wise, is impressive, and I feel if we play with it a little bit more, we probably could get our From the Shadows, Dreadstalker, Demon Bolt, um, Power Siphon, Decimating Bolt, there's a lot there. Uh, timing down a bit more. Dumping a few more bolts in that from the Shadows window. But regardless, the build is strong. It's there. 
I think for this build to be a bit more competitive or to be, I guess, the go-to build, if we probably just need to see a bit more of a buff to Sack Souls. Now, I know, I mean, listen, I like Nether Portal as much as the next person, meaning uh, not at all, but uh, I like Nether Portal. But th there's really no denying the power of Demonic Consumption. But I have to say, though, with all the synergy that Sack Souls has with this entire build, it's probably closer than it seems. And this build feels really different from the demonology we've played for a long time, but it feels a lot better. With a bit of tweaking or tuning, like a, a Sack Souls buff, uh, a Demon Bolt buff, this build could catapult itself ahead of the decon builds for single target. I've been really impressed with it. Mythic Blast, maybe not so much, but there are four four-ish patchwork bosses, maybe even a couple more, that might fit demonology's damage profile in Castle Nathria. This build is Definitely one that you need to keep an eye on heading into the last few weeks of beta because, hey, we do indeed finally have a release date. But yeah, thanks for watching, dudes. I hope the video helped give you guys a better look at just how Bale Spider is burning core, the new legendary changes, and just how Demo looked this current point in time in beta. I have to say, I think Demo should be a bit stronger single target wise, whether you're looking at the Sack Souls build or the Decon build in the first place, but that's just me because of its inherently limited damage profile. Regardless, though, I do think it's still a contender, and it, like I said, with a few buffs, it very well could be one of, I don't want to say the best choice, but maybe. I, I guess uh, dreams could come true. We'll see. Any weak wars, profiles, or add-ons you see here are indeed available to you guys for free on my Twitch if you want to swing by and grab them anytime. Let me know what you guys think of this build in the comment section below. I'm really, really curious to see what you guys think about it and just your feedback as a whole. Any questions, feel free to drop them down there as well. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you guys want to see more wild content and help support the channel, be sure to smash the subscribe button below. And while you're down there, hit that like button as well. Thanks again, dudes, and I'll catch you all again soon. Peace.